Hello there, my psychopathic comedians, and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k lore on the Eldar. I haven't done an Eldar video in a bit now, so I thought I could make another stop at the Harlequin shop and describe some of their most famous masks. These masks, if you don't know, are a bit like traveling troops which put on performances. I did talk about them in detail in previous Harlequin videos, so do check those out if you want. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Mask of the Dance Without End These guys are known to fall upon the enemy like an avalanche, appearing as if from nowhere with guns already blazing. They are full of passion and verve, and the players of this mask are renowned for their performances of the Spiral of Mirth and Madness. This is the cycle of dances, plays and monologues which recounts the deeds of Kegorak himself. It is said to bring these harlequins closer to their deity. Indeed, so deep is their connection to the Laughing God that it is rumored that the webway itself flexes and shifts at the mask's behest. Certainly the Dance Without End always seem to attack from the most unexpected quarter, vanishing on the breeze should the matters go awry. They wear the Rune of Myriad Paths, symbolizing both Kegorok's knowledge of the webway and the endless nature of his war. The Mask of the Dreaming Shadow These guys are the self-appointed guardians against the awakening Necron Menace. They appear morbid of spirit, resentful towards other masks, which is ironic given that they hold them in high regard. The players of the Dreaming Shadow are bound together in their morbid demeanor, and by a simmering resentment against the other masks. This sentiment, however, is exaggerated deliberately. It is part act and part truth, deriving from the fact that the war against the Necrons distracts from Kegorak's real battle with Slanesh. Their rune is the rune of unveiled mystery. It is meant to be an ironic comment, symbolizing the deadly threat their kin have chosen to forget. The Mask of Frozen Stars Playful and sinister in equal measure, these guys are well known for their irrepressible sense of humor. Standing vigil over the maiden worlds of the Eastern Fringe, these harlequins possess a genuine hope for the Eldar race. They believe that there is indeed a path to be trod through the horrors of the Rana Dandra, leading to a brighter future beyond. Following destinies gleaned by their shadow seers from a tangle of potential futures, this mask seeks to restore the balance of fate through the destruction of the enemy. Across the maiden worlds of the edges of the eastern fringe, they wage a war against the slow rot of chaos the arrogant might of the Imperium, and the reckless expansion of the Tao Empire. However, the Mask of Frozen Stars cares only for the resurgence of the Eldar, and no one else. They view the galaxy's intelligent races as vermin, there only to serve as the butt of their shockingly violent pranks and jokes. Often believing the motley clad warriors were coming to their aid, more than one race has discovered that the enemy of their enemy is not their friend. Over the millennia, the Masks players have overloaded the reactors of Hive cities, plunged mighty vessels unshielded into the warp, and even depopulated entire worlds, all of that in the name of lols for the Laughing God. Their rune is that of divergent chance, depicting the pathways of fate propped up by a foundation of certainty and determination. The Mask of Midnight Sorrow these guys are the ultimate enemies of Chaos, sworn to fight the endless battles of Kegorak against the ruinous powers. The name of the mask stems from the 18th verse of the third act of the fall, that infamous scene wherein Kegorak witnesses the darkest time ever to have befallen his wayward children. Echoing the bleak misery and clashing violence of that scene, the Midnight Sorrow will always endeavor to strike at the enemy as the witching hour tolls. Their razor-sharp focus drives the mask to pursue their agenda to the extent that no action whatsoever is deemed too extreme. On one hand they will strike alliances with the pawns of the corpse god, and on the other they will slaughter his slaves without mercy. 
this can seem capricious to the extreme to those that have to deal with them, but to them it is all part of the plan of Kegorak. In more recent years, this mask has been drawn increasingly into the conflict with the servants of Slanesh. The farseers of many craft worlds watch this mask with growing concern. Perceiving that the frenzied and daring nature of the Midnight Sorrow's actions are proof that the end is nigh. Their symbol is a spear driven into the inverse heart of twilight. To an alien observer, there is no easy interpretation of this, but the Eldar know it represents the Midnight Sorrow's desire to strike the enemy when daylight is slain, but before darkness reigns once more. A literal interpretation is that they favor attacking at dusk, but there is a more poignant reading too. The day of the Eldar has come and gone, and the Midnight Sorrows strike now before the long night can begin. The Mask of the Reaper's Mirth All Harlequins are masters of murder, although some are better than others. The Mask of the Reaper's Mirth takes the Laughing God's bloody humor to the extreme. Every battlefield is a gory canvas upon which they can paint their masterpieces of death. It is not enough to simply kill the enemy though, no, they have to be turned into examples of the most extravagant manner. The Palace of Crystal Bones, the Hall of Echoed Screams, and the Fountain of Crimson Tears, all works of the Reaper's Mirth. Because of their penchant for inventive cruelty, the mask attracts a high proportion of death jesters. Their rune is an ancient symbol representing both the first blooding of a weapon and the last breath of the enemy. The Mask of the Shattered Mirage There are some among the Eldar who have accepted the doom of their race, but they are far from welcoming oblivion. These lost souls rage against the slow destruction of their people, choosing to take the galaxy down with them. The Mask of the Shattered Mirage are ghosts of the webway. Both their kin and their enemies fear them. Their performances are dark and terrible to behold, conveying only fatalistic despair to the audience. When in battle they fight with a reckless abandon that is horrific to witness, and even in death they take with them dozens of the enemy. To fight the Shattered Mirage is to fight an enemy who doesn't fear death intent on the destruction of the enemy no matter the cost. Their rune is that of the lamented dead, integral to the mindset of the mask, and contained within its graceful lines and bladed curves is the demise of all things. The Mask of the Silent Shroud This mask acts in absolute silence all the time, the players never speaking one word. Their movements are the sigh of silk upon the air. Even their weapons are muffled with technology and illusion, the hiss of gunfire and the clash of blades echoing dimly as though piercing the veil from another dimension. Needless to say, this disorients and unsettles all the enemy, only adding to the sensory confusion of the Harlequin's assault. Everything that the mask does is veiled in secrecy and stealth and it often appears from nowhere to stage an impromptu performance without a need for a stage or accompaniment. Whether this is among the spires of Komora or the blood and horror of a battlefield, it matters not to the Silent Shroud. Their rune is that of a thorn-strangled stave, a mythic weapon used by the god Kurnos, the hunting god of ancient Eldar myth. This weapon was used by the god to strike down the prey without making a sound. The Mask of the Twisted Path This one is one of the most sinister of all Harlequin factions, luring both friends and foes into the webway never to be seen again. They are also some of the most well-traveled Eldar, and they have been fighting alongside humans, Tau, and even orcs, although to what end remains a mystery. They have a strange affinity with the craft world of Telenar, and they perform there often. Curiously, no one has ever disappeared from that craft world following a performance, although whether the inhabitants are cursed, blessed, or simply not of interest to the Harlequins of the Twisted Path is not known. Their players wear a bright ensemble of red, orange, and purple. They wear the rune of the Stolen Grace, 
symbolizing the souls taken by the Laughing God from the enemy and fashioned into weapons for his followers. The Mask of the Veiled Path The harlequins of this mask are merciless tricksters who cruelly exploit all other races to achieve their gains. They will feign alliance when in truth they care for nothing but their own. They are master manipulators, achieving their aim by any means necessary. In fact, it was they who caused Prince Iriel of Iandon to take up the Spear of Twilight. This baleful weapon has a heavy curse upon it, and once removed from the stasis chamber within the shrine of Ulfanesh, it cannot be set aside before death. When Iriel fought the Tyranids of the High Fleet Kraken, he bested several of the Hive Mind's greatest warriors in personal combat. But there were many who questioned why such a noble would draw a weapon that will claim his life. The answer to that lies with the Mask of the Veiled Path, who manipulated him into that duty. Even after the tragedy which befell that craft world, and the sorrow it caused, the Eldar of Ayandan never hesitate to answer their call to arms. Their rune is that of the inverse enigma, a signifier of riddles within riddles and plans within plans. It is associated not only with trickery, but also with backstabbing and ill omen demises. For today, I also have a poll regarding future Eldar videos. I am gonna take a break from Harlequins for a while, so this time you can choose between a couple of other things. Option A, more Craft World's lore, or option B, other Eldar forces. To vote, just write your answer in the comments below. Thank you for participating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the most well-known Harlequin masks from Warhammer 40k for today. Mind you, these are not all of them. I just try to include the ones with a picture of their color scheme and of their rune. What are your thoughts on these Harlequin factions? Which one of them did you find the most interesting? What did you like or dislike most about them? Do share any thoughts or other questions on the topic, if you have any, in the comments below as always. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. You can also stay more up to date by clicking the bell notification icon. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome healthy day. May the blessings of Isha be upon you.